Today we are going to be talking about setting up your own local Apache web server using XAMPP. Um, you'll see on your screen it looks like XAMPP, and I think some people say it that way. I've always called it XAMPP. There's different options out there. There's WAMP and MAMP for Macs, uh, for the Apple um, set, and all kinds of other um, crazy things with weird names, but um, they're all basically the same. I use XAMPP. It's, I tend to have the least amount of trouble with it. It's a real easy setup for Windows. And um, so we're going to talk about how you can get your own web server up and running on your own local machine um, so that you can then, in this case, um, install WordPress locally and start experimenting or building your own um, it's, pardon my pop-up from uh, Microsoft. Um, so you can start building um, your own uh, themes, or you can, if you're just experimenting with WordPress, or if you're uh, a developer, um, being able to be offline is super helpful and much quicker. And we're going to talk about how to do that. But you can use this for um, uh, Joomla or uh, Drupal or anything, a lot of other different things that you would want to start experimenting with uh, a web server uh, without actually messing anything up. So, what will you need to get started? Um, you're going to need to download your own version of XAMPP. Um, I have downloaded the flavor for Windows. We're going to be doing this whole install on a Windows 7 uh, machine. You're going to also want to, um, at some point, so you might as well do it beforehand, get a fresh version of WordPress. We're going to be using WordPress 3.61, which is um, what's currently out. And that's really all you need. We've already gone ahead and downloaded the XAMPP installer. Um, one trick I have for you is you're going to want to turn off your virus software. It's really a good thing to do anyway when you're installing software, but um, you can get false positives with the XAMPP installer because of, um, you know, just things with ports and stuff because you're sort of running a faux um, web server. So um, just disable your virus software. Don't be surprised. Um, if it pops up and tells you something, as long as you're downloading it from apachefriends.org here, um, you know you're in good shape. So you want to download it, and then you want to go ahead and start the install. Now, we have a copy installed already. Um, it's a fairly hefty... <laughs> it's saying it's safe, so that's good. I didn't follow my own advice, but that's because we're not really actually going to install it. I'm just going to kind of show you a couple tips and tricks. When you are... Um, you do turn off your virus software. It's going to come up probably and ask you if you want to allow it to make changes your, to your computer, and you can say yes. It's a simple install, but just a couple of weird, um, quirky things. And then the next thing it's going to do is it's going to basically ask you where in your computer you want to install it. It's also going to, well, first it's going to warn me that I have um, antivirus running, which I know. It's also going to give you actually this warning, which tells you basically um, don't install this where you normally would, which is C programs x86 most likely or, or C program files. Um, it's, it, it doesn't want you to do that because of uh, the way that it runs. You want to install it just locally in the C drive, and it's going to do that by default. So don't get tripped up by that. Just say, okay, move on. Here's my XAMPP setup wizard. I'm going to say next. I always just install all of the default components. You're really getting a full um, view so you can test like email functions like for contact forms and things like that. You're getting a fake send mail. You're getting your, your full um, uh, PHP, uh, my admin and, and MySQL directories and all kinds of different things on here that you, you know, you're going to want to fool around with. So I just install everything. Then I say next. This is sort of what that weird pop-up was alluding to before. You know, you, you just want to install it in the default. It should be right in your C drive. What you don't want to do is you don't want to install it in program files or program files x86 where you might have a whole bunch of other software. You just want to install it right in the root of the C directory. So just let that do it by default. So it's not going to let me go through and do it now because I've already installed it because it takes a few minutes to go through and set everything up. So once you get past, past this, as long as your antivirus software is off, you shouldn't have any trouble. And when it's all said and done, 
what you're going to do is you're going to end up with a uh, ZAMP control panel in your start menu. And when you start that up, you'll see that you have a little ZAMP control panel in your um, shortcuts over here. If I click on this and click show, here's my control panel. All right, so let's close this. So in however many minutes we've been listening to me blab, you have installed your very own locally running uh, web server. So first things you want to do is you want to open up the control panel. Um, you want to always start Apache, which is the, the web server itself. And it's going to just sort of do its default things. And you're going to always want to start MySQL. And that's really all we're going to talk about today just for the purposes of getting WordPress installed. So if you get any weird errors about ports, uh, the things I've found that have come up is if you're running chat software like HipChat or Skype, um, you know, you might get weird issues with ports. It's always best to just sort of make sure that stuff is shut down when you're going through this process um, because it might conflict with different things that are going in and out of your, of your computer um, already. So you know, sort of be wary of whatever you have open. I have had problems with chat software, but for the most part, it should just start right up. All right, so now that we've got this here, next thing we want to do is um, install a database. Um, and so we have a MySQL admin, which is pretty cool, or PHP My Admin, which opens up uh, just right in there in the control panel to this web page, which is your own offline version of um, a SQL database where you can go in and kind of manipulate things. So we want to create a database. Um, all WordPress installations need a database. So I'm going to click on databases. So we're going to create a database and, you know, I would name it something that would make sense, you know, you know, for your particular test site, whatever, you know, it's correlating with. So we'll just call this my untangled test uh, because this is our little uh, sort of test connection we're doing. You know, you can you can sort of leave that um, at the default. I'm going to say create, and it's telling me the database my untangled test has been created, and I can see it over here. You are almost there. Next thing you need to do is get WordPress. So you've already downloaded it, and what I would do is, I've got an unzipped version here, what I would do is I would name the WordPress installation the same as the database so that you know which sort of uh, installation of WordPress you're using on which particular site. So I'm going to call this My Untangled Test. And I'm going to move this over to where XAMPP was installed, which was C, XAMPP. And you'll see now you have a full-blown uh, server running here. I'm going to go to htdocs, just like I would if I was on my host, flywheel, host monster, whatever you're on. And I'm going to paste my untangled test here. So here is my WordPress directory right here. We're almost there. Next thing I need to do is I need to work on my WP config. Uh, oftentimes, if you're working on a, a, a host platform like Flywheel or, or Host Monster or something of that nature, they will have scripts that will run your installation for you for WordPress. Um, you can download scripts that will do that for you for XAMPP as well, but um, if you're going to be kind of developing online and working offline, you want to also learn how to um, kind of get things going on your own. So you always start in WordPress installations with a WP config file. And so we're going to um, open this up. And I recommend Sublime Text or Sublime Text 2 um, to manipulate all of your stuff, but it's up to you. What you're looking at right here is the things that say define DB name database name here, define db user, username here, define db password. So when we were setting up the database name and such, we set up the database name as my untangled test. 
And when we were setting up the user, we set up the user as my untangled. And then I set up a password, which I hope I can remember. I think I set it up as pass. Here's hoping. Okay, so again, when you're on a web host, oftentimes this will happen for you, but you're gonna you're gonna do this yourself. So whatever you created when we went into the MySQL admin, whatever you created for your database name and your database user and the password that you assigned to that user is what goes into these first three settings here in your WP config. What we're going to do now is we are going to save this and instead of saving it as WP config sample, we'll save it as WP config. All right, I hope everyone's with me out there. So now, I'll leave that open because I'm not sure I have the right password. Okay, so we now have a WP config file. We have all of our WordPress stuff. We've got our database. Okay, so now we theoretically can go to um, whatever we set up for our WordPress folder over here in htdocs, my untangled test, will be localhost slash my untangled test. So whatever you call it is what it's going to be for you. Um, it's going to immediately take us to the welcome to WordPress screen. Um, this is kind of where you would go even if you were installing on a, on a web host, um, you know, that you're paying for and such. This is where you kind of go when you first install WordPress. So we're going to give this a site title and I'll just call it my untangled test. <clears throat> you know, this is the title that shows up in your WordPress website. All this can be changed later, along with usernames for admins and things like that. But we can um, leave an admin for a username. It's just local. Um, you want to put your your email in here. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. And I don't want search engines to index this site. They're not going to find it because it's local. But I'm pointing this out anyway because if you are um, installing or working on a site um, that isn't local, um, you want to look at your privacy settings uh, because you don't necessarily want the search engines to start finding you until you're ready for them. Um, so I've given it a site title. I've given myself a WordPress username and password. And I'm going to say install WordPress. And you're going to find that this is... Uh, very very quick. Um, as they say, were you expecting more steps? Sorry to disappoint. Uh, we can then log in. So I'll log in. This is the password I just set up. And here I am. So, as you'll see, we are running on localhost slash test. And what we have here is a complete WordPress installation that's running right here in XAMPP HTDocs My Entangled Test. We've got a full uh, connection to the database uh, that's running locally on 127.0.0.1 called My Untangled Test. And here, since we've installed WordPress, you can see right here, these are all of the uh, tables that it sets up automatically by default. And from here, uh, sky's the limit. So you can go in, um, upload a uh, theme. You can import your settings. You can add plugins from here, um, just like you would any other uh, normal installation. You can search for plugins as long as you still have an internet connection um, and start going through your settings and really uh, turn this into a site that you can start building. Many thanks for uh, making it through this video with us and we hope you've learned a little bit about um, installing XAMPP locally and running WordPress. We'll see you again soon.